What's going on guys, Angel Ross here, CEO of Raw Cuts Barbershop and this educator and one half of Barber Life. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys my techniques when I do a down fade. We're gonna be doing a ball fade with a light design. Um, as well as at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to take some creative photos inside the barbershop without having to go outside, without having to waste too much time. Your photos are gonna come out 100% better, guaranteed. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, click the like below, leave a comment, and just simply share it with somebody. So the first tool I'm gonna to be using is the Andis Master Cordless. And I'm gonna be putting a number two guard. I like to start off by cutting the top. And I always make sure I, I brush the hair, comb the hair. Um, I wanna see what, where the, the growth pattern is in the hair. That way I don't leave any patches. Um, so I'm gonna brush the hair in the direction of the hair growth and make sure that I know exactly which way I'm gonna be cutting the hair to get it nice and even, no patches. And as I'm cutting the hair, I'm brushing to make sure I knock all that excess hair out of the way. Make sure I can see exactly what the hair looks like as I'm cutting it. Sometimes you'll get that hair that stays behind and it gets in your way and it makes you think that there's more hair to cut, but there's actually not. So you wanna make sure you comb it out of the way so you don't get misguided by the, the excess hair. And as I'm cutting, you can see that I'm combing the hair in the direction of, of the growth pattern. Every couple strokes, I just go back and comb it. Make sure the hair is laying nice and flat. So I always like to taper the front edge a little bit. Um, just to give me a, a, a nicer line when I go to give them a front edge up. So I'm gonna use a, a one and a half, and I'm just gonna taper that front down just a little bit to take off that lip. That's gonna give me a more precise line when I go back to do the edge up. And then I might take it down just a little bit more to a one. And I'm just hitting about a quarter inch of that front lip just to lay it down nice and flat. So for my next step, I'm gonna create a guideline. This is gonna show me where I'm gonna place my fade. Make sure my fade doesn't go too high or stay too low. This will be my guideline. And I always like to keep that peak nice and secure. I don't wanna fade that out because that's gonna give the haircut a little bit more detail when I go to finish it. So now as I'm creating my guideline, I'm just using my master all the way closed, so it's as low as it gets, and these are zero gap. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create my guideline all the way around. Now, as you can see, I'm not completely bald right where the line meets. So right underneath where I set my guideline, I'm gonna go with my cordless T-edgers and I'm gonna begin to bald it out closer to the skin to give me a tighter fade. So I'm staying right underneath that line. Now underneath my T-edger line, I'm gonna go back with my shaver and make sure we get extra close to the skin. So I'm staying right underneath that T-edger line and I don't wanna go above it because then I'm gonna create another line and I'm gonna have to get that out later on. So I wanna stay right underneath it. And again, I'm working all the way around the head to save my time. I see a lot of barbers like to work one side of the head at a time. 
And when you have a very busy schedule, um, sometimes that'll slow you out, slow you down throughout the day. So you want to make sure we work all the way around. Now, since I cut the top with a two guard, with, with the grain, um, I'm gonna start with the next biggest guard, which is a three. So I started with a two on top with the grain. Now I'm gonna go against the grain with a three guard. Um, and the reason I do that is because if I start with a two guard, going against the grain is gonna cut more hair than going with the grain. So I wanna make sure that I don't cut too much and, and cut into my fade. So I'm gonna start with a bigger guard. That's gonna show me where I'm at, and then I'm gonna work my way down from there. And the way I fade is I'm fading down. So I'll start with a big guard and then I'll work my way down and get lower as we go down. So this is my base. Now I'm gonna come up here and I'm fading down. So with a three guard, I'm coming across. And as you can see, I'm brushing through every stroke to make sure I don't get confused, make sure the hair lays down as I'm cutting against it. Still taking into consideration that growth pattern. And I wanna make sure I'm knocking my clippers right against it to make it nice and even. Now I'm gonna use the number two guard open and I'm gonna continue back around the other way. And this fade technique is really just a numbers game. Um, as you go down, the guards go down with you. So I started with a three, two, one, and then I'm gonna work down half, zero, skin. So it's just a numbers game with this technique. Now I'm gonna close it halfway and go back around the other way. Now I'm gonna go back around with my two guard all the way closed, and I'm gonna move all the way back around the head. And you don't always have to use the whole clipper. Sometimes you can use that corner of the clipper and just start creating your fade with just the, the corner of that blade to get more detailed. Especially in the tighter areas, you can't use the whole blade. But when you're in a bigger space like right here, you can use that whole blade to get it out. When it comes to the temple, I'll go back with the corner of my blade and give it a little more detail and help me work those tight spaces. Same with the back of the head, I can use the whole blade because I got a lot more space to work with. Now I'm gonna be using a number one guard. Again, open. And every time I switch my guards, as I come, as I come to start my fade, um, every time I switch my guards, I move down a little lower. So I started with a three a little higher, then I started with a two and a half, then a two, now a one, and then I'm gonna work my way down. But every time I work my way down, I'm coming down lower with the fade. And that's gonna give me that gradual fade look. I'm gonna close it about halfway, and I'm gonna move down just about a quarter inch and continue blending. Now I'm gonna close my one all the way, and I'm gonna continue working all the way back around. Now I'm using a zero guard all the way open. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing. And as we get down lower to these lower guards, the space starts to get tighter. So we're gonna really wanna use the corner of that blade. And we don't wanna hold our clippers too tight. We wanna make sure we got a loose C-stroke going. We start holding our clippers too tight, we start leaving behind lines. Um, so you wanna make sure you're getting that good C-stroke motion to where you're not leaving any hard lines with your clippers. And again, I'm just using the very corner of my blade to knock that line out. And you can already see my fade beginning to form. Starting to get a nice shadow. Now I'm gonna close my blade again halfway and work my way down just a little bit. Now I'm working back around, I'm gonna close it all the way. And I'm moving down just a quarter inch. Now I'm using my master with no guard on it. This is a regular blade, not a fade blade, just a normal master's blade all the way open. And I'm gonna continue to work my way down. The C-stroke is very important when it comes to using your masters without a guard. Because any little mistake any little dig into the hair you're going to leave a line so you want to make sure you're going and you're pulling out going pulling out you're not digging into the hair because then you're going to leave a line and you're going to have to get it out it's going to waste a lot of time trying to fade out those little divots now i'm going to again close my master halfway Continue working out that line. Now I'm gonna go back through with my master. I'm gonna close it almost all the way. Cause if you remember, we set our guideline all the way closed. So you wanna just open it up just a tad bit, just to knock that last little line out. As you can see, we've removed our entire guideline. And you go back and just touch up any little details you may have. And the good thing about this technique is you know where each guard was placed. So you can go back and hit a one guard, hit a half guard, but always you always wanna start with the bigger guard. So if you think that's a half guard, I would say start with a one just to make sure. And that's gonna show you where your links are before you get in there with a half guard and make a mistake and then have to go back and and refade it. Always start with a bigger guard first, especially when you're guessing. So another tool that I like to use is my Envy. This is a custom gold Envy by B. Clark, um, but it's got a fade blade on it in particular. I love my fade blade because once I'm done with the haircut, if I wanna go back and touch any spots up, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using a fade blade. This is gonna give me more detail in my work, um, and it's just gonna get more precise with the fading as far as the bottom line. Now you don't wanna go too high with this because it will leave divots in the hair, and then you'll have to go back and, and refade that out. So you wanna make sure you're very careful with this tool. Also with this tool, you don't want to use a C-stroke motion like we were doing before, 
because you will poke the pores. Um, so you want to make sure you're staying nice and flat with this blade up and down because this blade can be dangerous as far as, uh, you know, picking at the pores and, and, and catching those pores. So make sure you're doing a very flat up and down motion with this blade. Um, but it is a tool that will really help you get detailed with your fades. And I'm just going back and just lightly touching up just whatever I see um, necessary. Sometimes you may not need it, but if you want to get detailed with your work, this is definitely a tool that will help you do so. And again, I'm just using the very corner of the blade, just like I was with my master. But instead of the C stroke, I'm just going up and down motion. And one thing that'll help you with this tool is stretching out the skin. So you wanna make sure you give it a nice stretch. Um, this will help you flatten out the skin, that way you don't catch any pores. And it'll help you see where the, the lines or the little divots may be, just to give you that more detailed fade. And just like with every tool that I've used, I'm always going back and brushing the hair out of the way. That's going to be key because sometimes that excess hair will stay there and it'll look like there's a line, but it's really not. It's just the extra hair that's still sitting in your way. All right, so now that we've done the fade, um, this is a product that I like to use. It's called Liquid Razor Chap 2. Um, I'm gonna just spray the hairline. Even though I'm still gonna be using a razor, this is a product that I really like because it, it, it gives my clippers that extra sharpness that I'm looking for. So I just go ahead and I cover my client's eyes and I'm just gonna lightly spray his hairline. And then we give that about, about two minutes just to dry up and harden up a little bit. Another product you can use that some barbers use is spritz. Um, spritz tends to be a little harder for me because it, it hardens up a little bit too much where this right here kind of gives you that light hold. Um, but yeah, this is a great product. If you want to speed up the process, you can use a blow dryer and just start to dry it out. Now when I'm doing my front line, I want to take a step back and just make sure I'm looking at the hairline all the way across before I even start. Sometimes we might start on one side, but this side doesn't grow the same. So you wanna make sure you take a good step back and just look at the hairline, make sure where you know exactly where both sides are. If one side's higher, you might need to match it up. So you wanna take a step back and just make sure you give it a good look. And I like to start on this right side, being that I'm left-handed. And just give them a light line. And when you're doing these edge-ups, you don't have to be super heavy-handed, especially with that liquid razor, because it's gonna dry out the hair and just, it's gonna give you the ability to just give it a light touch and it's gonna put the line that you're looking for. And we're gonna go back over it with the razor, so there's no need to get it super sharp with the clippers. You just wanna make sure you're setting your, your, your baseline up. Now with these temple lines, I like to give it a little bit of an angle, not too much, but you don't, want to, you don't want to make it flat. You want to give it the appearance that it's coming outward a little bit. So when you look at it from the front, it looks nice and square. Sometimes barbers like to come in with this line a little bit and it just looks kind of funny from the front because it, it kind of makes the edge up look like it's coming out. So you want to make sure you give it that nice angle. And again, super light because you know you're going to go back over it with the razor. So you don't have to be super heavy handed. All right, now with the curve on the, on the edge up, you're gonna wanna use the very corner of this blade and just lightly edge it out. And when you're doing this edge up, you always wanna use your middle finger as your kickstand. If you don't have a kickstand, you're not stable enough to do the edge up. Sometimes you might slip. So you always wanna make sure you have a kickstand, either your middle finger, index finger, something that's gonna help you stabilize that clipper to give you that nice line. Same thing on the other side, 
We're using the opposite corner. And you want to step back and just make sure your, your peak points are at the same level. Sometimes that'll throw your whole line off. So you want to make sure you know exactly where your peak points are going to end up. And we're just using the very corner of the blade. On this side, being that I'm left-handed, I'm using the back of my hand as my kickstand. Sometimes I use my index finger, but mainly my whole hand. Being mindful of the client, I don't want to put my whole hand on his face, but I do want to make sure I'm, I'm using my kickstand and making sure I'm not wobbly or shaky. Now I'm using the Barber Life, the Cloud. This is a razor that I created myself. Um, it's on our website, barberlife.com. Call it the Cloud. And with this, I'm using a Dorco Prime. And if you can see, this blade kind of sticks out a little bit on this, on this holder. This gives me more detail with my, my blade. I'm gonna use a little bit of shave gel just to help my blade glide a little bit. On the front line, I like to come down with my blade just to get those little hairs out of the way. And this is part of the reason we tapered out the front so we can get a nice crispy edge up in the front with our blade. Sometimes if the hair's too long, that lip will kind of get in your way. Now I'm gonna throw a little part, something simple, just a light little design with my T-edger. And this is just the freestyle. And I kind of use my, my edger as a pencil. So I'm just gonna be using that very corner of my blade. And I'm just gonna draw a little freestyle part design. back over with my design with my blade so I'm gonna put a little bit of shave gel on there and I'm making sure I'm stretching out the skin and just creating detail So now here's the fun part, which is my color enhancement. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I wanna brush my hair back. Cause what I'm doing with these color enhancements is I'm setting a background to my hair. So I'm giving it almost a backdrop. So what I'm really focused on is the skin underneath the hair. So I'm gonna dye the skin underneath the hair to make that hairline look nice and perfect. Um, and today I'm gonna be using a product called Kiss Express. And I like to use black. Um, even when I'm doing it on a lighter hair, I'll just water it down just a little bit to give it the effect of a nice brown shade. But yeah, I'm, I'm brushing the hair back because I'm really focused on the, the skin underneath the hairline. Sometimes when you brush the hairline back, you can't really see where the line is. So this is where we're gonna use our magic pencil. You can find these on Amazon. I'll mark the link below. And we're just gonna outline our hairline. Just so we know exactly where it is. This magic pencil also keeps the color from running. So if you do happen to water it down just a little bit too much and it crosses over onto the forehead, the magic pencil will make it a little bit easier to wipe off helping you create that perfect line you're looking for. Now that we've drawn the line, I'm using a Just For Men brush. Just a little bit of kiss on there, and I'm just gonna apply it right on that line. I'll let it sit for a second, and then I'll brush it in with my Andis brush. I'm gonna again do the same thing on the other side. 
sometimes when you drag that brush across, it gives it a better, straighter line. And then you just go back and fill in everything else. And you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit of color because you don't want to overdo it and make it look fake. Um, you want to try to keep it as natural as possible. So we're just using a little bit of color. And then we're brushing it in. And when I'm doing the corners, I kind of like to brush up into the hair rather than out into your fade because then you're going to be able to see that color. It's not going to blend right. And I just go back and brush it in. And you see it just blend right into the hair. Now you're gonna use a comb and you're gonna brush all your hair forward. And the reason we don't use a brush is because you'll, you'll smear the color down. With the comb, you can kind of just graze the hair and brush it down without removing that color or dragging the hair color down into the forehead. I'm gonna go, go back with my edger and just get rid of that, that line we made with the magic pencil. We're just gonna blend it out. We're not touching the hairline, we're just blending out that, that magic pencil line and we're not being heavy handed, we're just lightly touching it. You start getting heavy handed, you start scarring up your clients, you wanna make sure you're as light as possible, just getting rid of that line. Now with my blade, I'm gonna put my last touch on it and just make sure I get all those little stubbles nice and smooth by going against the grain. I like to use a, a curved shear to get all these little hairs off. I'm just gonna glide across the top and just start to snip all those little hairs. All right, so we just finished up with the ball fade. Um, it's a mid fade with uh, light design on the sides. And we're all finished up. Put a little bit of wave grease in there to lay the hair down nicely. Um, so yeah, there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the technique. Um, for my next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the camera, how to get proper lighting in the barber shop, how to take a quick shot of a, of a nice haircut without having to use too much stuff. Um, without having to go outside and it's going to save you a lot of time and give you that quality look that you're looking for when you're posting on Instagram and social media. So you guys tune into the next video. Um, if you like what you saw, subscribe, share it with a buddy, share it with a friend and uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you think, what you want to see next and make sure you tune into that next video so you can learn how to use this bad boy right here.